when I was first diagnosed with cancer, I told everybody that I would have to go through some treatment, but then everything would go back to normal. And I now know that that's not really true. Hello everybody, my name is Samantha and I have cancer, but you probably already know that by now. If you don't know that, you either can't read or you haven't seen any of my videos before or you don't know me in real life. So everyone who can read, I know you can see the title of this video. You know that I am making it to explain how I found out that I had stage 4 cancer. I've wanted to make this video for a while, but I couldn't really figure out how I wanted to do it, so this video could be all over the place. I have another video on my channel about how I found out I had cancer, and if you know me in real life, I probably either told you about it or you saw it on Facebook. And when I first found out that I had cancer, I did not know that it was stage 4, so I just want to put that out there that when I originally told all of you people and I didn't tell you it was stage 4, I wasn't trying to keep that information from anybody. I actually just didn't know that. But still, this is not new information to me. I've known this for quite a long time. I've mentioned it in some of my other videos, but when I talk about it in person with people, I kind of try to not mention it, and I don't really like to bring attention to it because I feel like when someone says they have stage 4 cancer, that kind of makes people freak out a little bit. When anyone says that they have any type of cancer, obviously that makes people freak out, but when people hear the word stage 4, I don't know, it just makes them freak out more. So I really try not to bring that up unless someone specifically asks me about it. And then even if they do ask me about it, I tell them, but I kind of sugarcoat it a little bit. So I really wanted to make this video because I don't want to sugarcoat anything. I'm going to tell you how it is. I promise you this isn't going to be really negative either. This is how it is, basically. Cancer is graded in stages. Stage 0 is the lowest, stage 4 is the highest. It has to do with how hard it is to treat and how hard it is to cure, so stage 4 is the hardest to cure. There's no way better to say that. That's the truth. Stage 4 is the hardest to cure. If you have breast cancer, like I do, it will start in your breast, and then as it keeps growing, it can spread to more places. Once the cancer spreads from the original area and out, to a different part of the body, that's when it's stage 4. So my cancer had spread to my nearby lymph nodes and that was known pretty much the first day I was diagnosed. But with breast cancer, that doesn't mean stage 4 because they're so closely connected. What is considered stage 4 if it spreads somewhere farther away, like the brain, the liver, the lungs, or the bones. The cancer can be more serious depending on the place that it has spread, how many places it has spread, and how much is in the new place. If my breast cancer was really, really early on and it was just a small tumor in the breast, or if it was just DCIS, then that could have just been removed without having to do chemo and all of that. But my cancer was always known to be early advanced breast cancer, so I was always going to have chemo, surgery, and radiation. When I learned that my cancer was stage 4, there wasn't that much that actually changed. So if you've seen my first video, you know everything that happened up to when I found out I had cancer. Shortly after that, they did a PET scan. They scan everything and it's a way to identify where cancer is in your body. The tumor in my breast lit up, my lymph nodes lit up, so they were like, yep, your cancer is exactly where we know it is, everything's good. Then later on, they called me and they told me that they found a little area on the scan that had lit up that was on my second left rib. I was then sent for a CT scan and nothing really showed up on that. So then I was sent for an MRI and a nuclear bone scan. A nuclear bone scan, I guess, is a way to see if there is new bone growth happening. And nothing showed up on that scan either, so it wasn't showing up that there was a bunch of new bone growth. But on the MRI, it showed that that rib looked different from my other ribs. Since there hadn't been really any other scans of my rib in my lifetime, they weren't positive that it was cancer. They thought it was likely cancer, but they weren't sure because, you know, what if that one rib is just different than my other ribs? So normally in that situation, what doctors would do is they would biopsy it, but that was just not something that they wanted to do with where the cancer was. It was possible, theoretically, but it would have been really hard. It would have been really hard to make sure that they were accurate. So they were like, we're not going to biopsy it. We're just going to pretend that it's cancer. And the only difference 
that that meant was I was gonna have radiation on that rib. Because if there is cancer there, that's the only way to treat it. I couldn't have it surgically removed based on where it was, and it was so small that they could blast it with radiation. So it didn't really change that much of my treatment because I was still gonna have breast radiation. So this just added five extra days of radiation to blast that rib. So they told me about this in March, but I was like, nah, that's not cancer. Yeah, sure, we can do whatever precautions you need to do, but no, there's not cancer there. I refused to let myself believe that there was cancer there at all because I didn't know. So I didn't want to tell people about this really because why worry when we don't know? So that was sort of my mindset. I knew that we were gonna be treating that spot as if there was cancer there, but I, uh, I just didn't believe that there was. I was like, nah, my body might just not be perfectly symmetrical. And I had talked about the rib before and I had told people about the rib before, but I kind of just brushed it off. And also people didn't know that if there was cancer there that that meant stage four, but that is what stage four is. If it has spread to a different spot, then that means stage four. And the thing that's scary about stage four is that if it has spread to a different location that's far away from where it started, that means that it has spread there through the blood. And if it has spread there through the blood in your body, that means that there could be traces of cancer at a lot of different spots in your body because blood goes through your body. I was sure that this wasn't cancer because I thought that if it was, then there would be more stuff that showed up on the PET scan. It wasn't until my second round of scans that I actually believed it. In August, after I had finished chemotherapy, we knew that the tumor in my breast shrunk from chemo, and we knew that the stuff in my lymph nodes was better because we could see it on ultrasounds and stuff, but we wanted to, you know, get the full PET scan to have the full look to be able to compare. My PET scan looked really good. Things weren't lighting up as they were. That was good news, and that was the news I was telling people because, you know, it was true. The chemo did work better than expected. None of that was a lie, but that spot on the rib was also gone. Since that spot was gone, that probably doesn't mean that my rib is just different than the other ribs. Then I had an MRI to check the status of that rib. I actually showed these pictures in another video too, but I'm gonna show them again here. The top one is what my rib looked like before chemotherapy, and the bottom one is what it looked like after. So you can see in the after picture, it's a lot brighter white. The cancer in the before picture was kind of spread out throughout the rib, and then in the after picture, the chemo had kind of pushed it so it was contained in like a small little speck, which was great because my radiation was gonna be going in and zapping a spot. When it's in one area, you're like, oh, I just need to zap this little circle right here. That made them all very happy that the chemo had done that, but it did mean stage four cancer. And they were like, okay, like, still possible that it's not because we still haven't biopsied it, but we're pretty sure that there's cancer there. It wasn't really until August that I was like, okay, fine, I guess there's cancer there. I need to deal with the fact that it's stage four. It's hard to say because it sounds serious, right? That's why I don't tell people about it because it sounds serious, it makes people freak out. And it is serious because it is already broken out of the breast. So there's a higher chance that it can show up and it can show up anywhere. So yeah, all of that's really scary and all of that's really serious and I'm not gonna take away that, but it doesn't mean that I'm dying. If it gets to the point where it has spread to somewhere else and different treatments can't contain it, that's when it might mean that I'm dying. But right now, it really doesn't mean that I'm dying. And it also doesn't mean that it's not curable. If you look up stage four on the internet, it basically says it's not curable. That's usually true, but it's not always true. With my case specifically, I think there is a higher likelihood that we can cure it. I'm not just saying that because I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna fight and I'm gonna beat this cancer. The reason I say that is because the cancer didn't spread to a lot of different areas. And you saw the picture of the scan, it's tiny. It's a little tiny spot on my rib. Sure, it would have made everyone feel better if we could have removed it with surgery, but since it was in that tiny little area, it was easier to treat with radiation. Did radiation get rid of all of it? I don't know. But I can tell you that there's a better chance of that happening than if it was, you know, how it looked before, all kind of spread out. So the treatment plan I was on was really set up for a cure. All the big stuff in the breast was removed, the lymph nodes were removed, um, 
the internal mammary lymph nodes were shot with radiation and that spot in my rib was shot with radiation. So I could be done with cancer. That could be it. It could be gone, but it also could not be. Like I said, it traveled from my breast to the bone of my second left rib. So it's been in another place in my body, which means that it's more likely to show up in another place in my body. So if we talk statistics now, for breast cancer, if you look at the five year survival rates, they're pretty good um, up through stage three. Stage zero is 100%, stage one is 100%, stage two is 93%, stage three is 72%. When you get to stage four, it's only 22%. One thing about statistics is they don't apply to an individual person, they apply to the entire group. And the other thing is, is if those are five year survival statistics, then they're at least five years old. And we're constantly getting better and better at stopping cancer. I believe that my chances are higher because stage four can mean that it's spread to your rib and it's a tiny little spot and you can blast it with radiation. Or it can mean that it has taken over your entire brain or your liver. There's not really a way to pinpoint what my specific survival chances are because my case is completely different from everyone else's case. So those are the statistics, not sugarcoating them. Like I said, I'm not sugarcoating things in this video, but I think that my chances are higher. And based on all the other things I said, I truly, truly believe that. So yeah, I really just wanted to make all that clear because, you know, I wanted to give everyone all the information. I don't want to lie about having stage four cancer because I do, but I don't want people to freak out about it. I don't want people to think that I'm dying. I'm not dying yet and I'm not planning on dying anytime soon. So yeah. But on the other hand, this is still really serious. It's a lot more serious than if I just had some DCIS and then I got it removed. I have two sets of people. I have people that freak out when they know that it's stage four and then I have some people that think I'm done. They think I'm done with everything with cancer, that it's nothing to worry about anymore, that I can just go back to my normal life. And I want to tell you that no, it's a balance between those two things. I'm not gonna die but I'm not returning to normal life either. When I was first diagnosed with cancer, I told everybody that I would have to go through some treatment, but then everything would go back to normal. And I now know that that's not really true. I might go back to looking how I used to look, but I'm not gonna feel how I used to feel. And my mindset is completely different. I'm still on oral chemo. I'm still on hormone therapy. I'm still fighting cancer. People ask me, why are you still getting treated if there's no cancer left in your body? And it's because I don't know if there's cancer left in my body. And you know, whatever caused it to show up in the first place, it could happen again. They have to closely monitor me to make sure that cancer doesn't come back and that things are still looking good. I have my next scans in early February and I'm gonna be making a scan week vlog. And that's when I'll have my results from my next scans. <laughs> I'm hoping that they don't show anything. But even if you can't see anything on the scan, that doesn't mean that there's no cancer in my body because scans can't pick up everything. That was basically proven in my second PET scan. I got that second PET scan and there was nothing that lit up in my breast. It looked like a completely normal person's breast. But then when I had surgery, they took out the tumor and there was still cancer in it. So scans don't pick up everything that's why i need to get them a lot so that they can monitor them and make sure that nothing is changing then if something starts to change we can attack it with something and stop it before it kills me okay i think i covered everything i want to cover but if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me or leave a comment down below give this video a like and if you think my channel will help somebody please share it with them. Also subscribe by clicking that red button. And once you do subscribe, click the little bell icon and then you'll be notified when I post new videos because I post new videos a lot. Yeah, that's all, bye.